One of my most popular videos on this channel has been a simple countdown tutorial. There's so many ways to do countdowns with After Effects and there's so many uses for them. From simple countdowns to the start of your stream, through to minute to win it games, or if you want to get a little bit fancy, you can count down to the launch of your SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. So let's have a look at another way we can do a countdown in After Effects by creating this flipping, spinning, sports style seconds countdown. So let's not count down any more seconds and jump into how we can create this in Adobe After Effects. So here I am in a brand new After Effects project. I'll create a new composition, 1920 by 1080 and two minutes long. I'll then grab my text tool, click and type out my starting value. So whatever is the value I've entered in here is the value it's gonna start counting down from. Toggling down in my timeline window, I get this little animate option here that I can click on and select things I wanna animate. In this case, I wanna animate the position value of the text, as well as going down to the add, it gives me the same ability to add additional ones onto our animator. And I'm gonna select opacity. So you can see we've got this animator, it's got a range selector and it gives me these two properties that I can animate. Toggling down on the range selector, I'm going to go to advanced to the units and change it from percentage to index because I want to be able to control the characters separately. The end property should be on two, but I'm going to actually add an expression to the start property. Holding alt, click on the stopwatch, gives me the expression window. And I'm going to write in here, if left parentheses text.source text, so referencing our source text, value at time, left parentheses time minus 0 0.5, right parentheses mod, which is the percentage symbol, 10 equals equals zero, right parentheses. Then we're gonna do the curly brackets and we're gonna say zero, end curly brackets, when we will say else, the next curly brackets, one curly brackets. And what we're saying here is we're saying we're refer referencing what the value of the text is at the current point in time minus half our frame rate and we're comparing it to see if it's divisible by 10 without any remainder. If it's without any remainder, such as if you had the number 60, we want this value to be zero. Otherwise, we want it to be one. That's going to control when our animation applies to our starting number, as it's always going to apply to our end number. Next, we're going to go to our source text up the top. We're going to hold Alt, click the stopwatch, and we're going to write our expression to set this thing in motion. Now we're going to write a new variable by saying var nv for new variable. And we're going to say it is equal to value minus math.floor. So just getting rid of any decimals, rounding down. We're going to go left, left parentheses time to frames, left parentheses time, forward slash 25, right parentheses to close that out. And that's basically going to say, I want my current value that I initially set at the start, and I just want to minus seconds, how many seconds have gone by. We're then going to say if for a conditional, we're going to say if nv is less than zero. So if our countdown is finished, we want the value instead to be equal to nothing. So it just disappears. Then we'll say right parentheses else if nv is less than 10. So if we're in the last 10 seconds of our countdown, right parentheses, we're going to say our value is equal to zero, but we're saying the zero is in quotation marks, and then we're going to say plus nv. So we're basically adding a zero character to the end, no, to the start of our value. Because if we count down to nine, we're just getting the number nine, not zero nine. It doesn't look really neat. Finally, we're just going to say else to give us all the other values in our countdown, and we're just going to say value is equal to new value, like so. If I scrub forward, you can see it's counting like so. You can see once we get to under 10 seconds, it's adding that zero character in, so it's nice and clean up until that point. And once we hit zero, the whole thing disappears, exactly what I want to happen. Now let's animate the actual text. We're going to zoom in here so we can see the zero and one frame, or one second mark and scroll down to those two positions and opacity uh, properties that we selected earlier. We'll start with the position property. We're gonna hit the stopwatch to set a keyframe, and we're gonna change the second value to minus 100. That's gonna move our last character up a little bit. We'll go forward a little bit. We'll go and change that to say zero. So now it's centered. Go forward a little bit more. 
hit zero, and then finally on the one second mark, we're gonna go 100 to go down. So you can see there it goes, comes in from the top and then goes downwards to move out of the way. We're gonna select all these, hit F9, and then we're going to click this button at the top called the graph editor. That's gonna let us make it a little bit smoother and less janky. This is called easing. So you can see I'm selecting the bottom handles and dragging them out to kind of make this nice sort of volcano curve shape. If you wanna find out more about easing, I do have a video on it as well. We'll go to the opacity property now. We're gonna go and set it to zero at the very start. We'll move forward to where our next keyframe for our position is, move it to 100, go to the next one, we'll hit 100, and then go to the final one, hit zero. And you can see it's animating that character in and it disappears. It's all well and good, but it's not applying to any of the others. And that's why we need to hold Alt, click on the stopwatch for our position property. We're gonna then click this menu option here and grab the property loop out expression and that's going to drop it in there we want to do the same thing for our opacity expression so we're going to click the alt click the stopwatch go in here select property and then loop out and you can see there now it's applying itself every second that's because our keyframes are only contained within one second it's just going to do the exact same thing every time every second so you can see it gives us that smooth animation and it applies all the way through till the end. Now this is all cool, it looks really great. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. If I wanted to, I could change the number by just simply double clicking on it. And you can see now it's counting down from 90 instead of 60. But what I also wanna do is animate this cool circle spinning effect around it. So what I'm gonna do is go to the title and action safe, make sure I can see the center. Then I'm going to go up to the top, make sure I'm doing a custom shape instead of a mask. If I'm getting the mask option, it's cause I have this text layer still selected. Gonna click in the middle and then holding control and shift, I'm gonna drag it out like so till I get a nice circle around. Now selecting that layer, I'll go to the effects menu i'll go down to the bottom to transition and hit radial wipe then in here i just want to say it's 50 percent complete and then i'm going to feather it out a whole lot to about 390. you can see it gives this this sort of gradiented look what i'll do is i'll select that effect duplicate it again and then instead of that i'm going to go and change it to 35 percent change the start angle to 90 I'll change it from clockwise to counterclockwise and get rid of my feather. And you can see now it's kind of cut it out on one side and let it fade out on the other. Now, if I try to move this around, you'll see it goes weird. It kind of starts cutting stuff out in a wrong way. I could do some expressions to fix this, but really the easiest way is just to pre-compose it and move everything into it like so. Now, what I'll do is I'll actually go down here to my timeline window and parent my pre-comped layer to my text layer. And that means that if I move my text layer around, I scale it or anything, this animation is going to apply to it. What I'll do is I'll zoom in, I'll select my pre-comp, hit R for rotation, click the stopwatch at zero seconds, go forward to one second, and I'm gonna type the number one into here to say it completes one full rotation. And then similar to before, I'm holding Alt, click on the stopwatch, and I'm going to add in that same loop out expression like so. So now it's gonna loop every second, which is super cool. Now the other thing I'll do is I'll hit T to bring up the opacity property of my pre-comp. I've gotta hold Alt, click on the stopwatch because I wanna write an expression in here. And it's a simple expression, it's a linear expression. I have a video on linear expressions if you wanna find out more about them. But in this case, we're gonna say linear, left parentheses, number, left parentheses, parent, dot text, dot source text. So it's referencing the source text property of my text layer that it is parented to and turning that into a number so it can use it as a value to determine that it is going between zero and two. And when it's going between zero and two, it's gonna give me a result between zero and 100. So when it is zero, in this case, zero seconds, I want the opacity to be zero. And when it's two seconds, I want it to be 100. Now, I'm not counting up, I'm counting down, so this is actually gonna work in reverse, but because the linear equation says you need to put a min and max, I can't put it around the other way. So I'll go and test that now, and you can see now that testing that out, it gets to one second, it gets to zero, and my pre-comped little rotatey thing has disappeared, which is exactly what I want it to do. So it's now all integrated. 
I could even duplicate this layer, shrink it down a little bit and change it to say, instead of rotating once every one second, rotate twice every one second. And then if I preview that, you can see it gives me this really cool multi-tiered ring look as it counts this down. Now that hasn't been too hard to create. I've made this all in under 10 minutes, which is amazing. So there you have it. You've got this cool countdown that you can go, you can move it around, scale it, put it down in the bottom corner. And the advantage of this as well is you could export this as a QuickTime file. It's transparent behind, so you could drop it onto any video you want. But please let me know if you have any other ideas for what you want to do with countdowns. Let me know any other ideas for videos in the comments down below. Make sure to give this a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more great After Effects tutorials. Until next time, my name is Bench. Thanks for watching.